So it looks like my, my little uh, emulator here finally decided to uh, come back up and, uh, and react properly. So let's real quickly go into our uh, scan star tool and take a look here. Here you can see again I'm in the footprints configuration management database over here. And we'll go in and we'll receive a few assets just to give you an idea of, of how it works and, as importantly, the, uh, the speed. So I, we do have a separate login for security purposes on our, on our scanner here. So, and again, we, we pull this from the Footprints address book as far as which of those people has been designated as someone who is allowed to use the scanner. Of course, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't give that to everybody. So that we're going to say that uh, Brett is the person that we're going to be logging in here. Uh, and then what you'll see, I'm putting my password real quick, it will then bring up all of those particular uh, modules that uh, we just showed you in the PowerPoint. Now, what I've got here, the reason I have this little emulator running is I actually have an MC70 scanner setting here, and I'm going to actually be scanning barcodes and that type of thing, and obviously you can't see my physical device unless I've got this type of emulator, so that's actually uh, what it's for. So I'm going to, the use case I'm going to try to show you here is I'm going to be receiving in, you know, a half a dozen or so uh, ThinkPads that we are ordering into the system and just kind of show you how easy that is to do. So, and the, these are your classifications, but these are all laptop PCs is what you're calling them in your environment. And uh, in this case, the manufacturer would be, uh, you know, Lenovo. Uh, the model that we're getting are, you know, T410Ss. Uh, the asset status is their new purchases. So if it's a new purchase, we're going to uh, stick that in our uh, we're going to stick that in our warehouse here. We're not going to put a user because we don't know ultimately who it's going to go to at this point in time. But I do want to record my financial information that we paid you know x amount of dollars per machine here. We did buy the uh, extended warranty, so that'll take it out through uh, 2016. And as I mentioned, if you wanted to, I could come down and have the person on the dock actually go in here and, you know, sign that they have, uh, they have received these devices here. Sorry for my uh, bad signature there. And at that point in time, I'm ready to kind of go down the, the dock, if you would, and start uh, scanning my assets. So I'm going to stand up here a minute and grab my, uh, grab my scanner. And there's the first one. There's the second one that... Kind of hard to hold this paper and do it at the same time, but you get the idea. There's my third one. So, again, ever how many I had, obviously each one of these is a unique uh, serial number that we're scanning here, but they all had these common properties if you wanted to do there. So that's the part in there, and I'll, I'll pop out of the receive mode now and kind of show you what the middle module like look like, which is where you're doing your move, ads, and changes and all that we call track. So here, for example, is where I could take an asset that's currently in a warehouse and now assign it out to a different individual in, a, in, a, in another spot. So in this particular, uh, in this particular case, we're gonna, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about the manufacturer of the model and all of that because we're going to already know that since it's already been scanned in. But we, we do want to indicate uh, that we're going to pop this over to a particular user. So I'm going to actually go out and assign that to myself. So this will be my new laptop I've got. Uh, and that's really all I, all I need to do at this point. So again, I go back, I grab my scanner, I hit the device, and then boom, just that quickly, it captures that, says that it's now going to be this particular device, which is a Dell Latitude. Again, continue to go around doing my move add to changes. Once I do that, again, I could save and exit there. Now, as far as the update to the CMDB, you can do this wirelessly if that's your preferred method, depending on you know, what your security is and your firewalls and all of that, or what a lot of customers do and what I'm doing today is I've actually got a cradle connected via USB to a machine that has access to the footprint service core, and so I will just synchronize that way. So what's going to happen here, we received in, I believe it was two or three or, or four of those uh, T410s, we then moved a Dell, some type of laptop, and assigned it to an individual user. So as soon as this flushes here and does its sync, we'll go back in and we'll refresh this particular database. We should see those new Lenovo's, and we'll go in and pull up that record where I assigned uh, one of my devices um, over to that particular one. So if we come over here and refresh, and I know we're getting late on time if we're going to do questions here, 
If we'll come over and do our refreshes, you can see, you know, right now it's reflecting things in warehouses. We would be able to go in then and see how we've reflected it out to uh, 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 to other areas or received in the uh, the uh, the new units there. And it's still still doing its trick here. But again, I think you can see just how fast you were able to go out and do that type of receiving. Again, a lot more, uh, a lot more, a lot quicker than trying to key in those numbers, which again are typically somewhere between seven and twelve, depending on which format that uh, that you're doing there. So, I think you get the general idea there. Let's uh, maybe go back to our question panel at this point. Okay. Uh, Roger, and I think that to sort of summarize there is a, is a big time saver, which uh, uh, equates to time is money. So you can save, save some money, too, by simplifying things on the uh, asset management side of things. Okay, next question here is uh, integration with Asset Core. If you scan items in upon receipt, how do you tie it with the eventual entry in Asset Core, and how difficult is that integration? Yeah, so what would happen is that uh, Asset Core is still going to discover that device when it goes out, but when it goes to then look at the CMDB, we're going to see that that particular device already exists. So when you, regardless of your discovery tool, upon initial discovery, it creates the record in the CMDB, but as it does subsequent scans, it updates any changes to the configuration that we had out there and puts it in there. So you'll never get a double write or anything of that nature uh, doing it that way. Okay, and then next question here is, so if you have a separate workspace for servers and tie that into your CMDB, if you add a server to an RFC as a CI, can your workflow open slash update a ticket uh, into the server workspace? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in, in footprints, all of the workspaces can obviously be very standalone and unique where you need to do data protection. But when you are in any of your workflows, one of the things you can do is update another workspace or another field within a workspace. So that's really kind of out-of-the-box functionality for the footprint service core product. And the, the uh, you know, that that's just pretty standard the way you do it. You remember the the analogy I gave you up front of like where multiple workspaces do need to talk to one another, they can pass data back and forth, such as on a um, onboarding of a new employee and so forth. Yeah, well, some you know that kind of reminds me. So related to that, let's let's say that um, you have a network and you have some discovery tools, and and maybe what happened is a piece of uh, equipment, maybe a, a laptop or something, showed up out on a network somewhere, and you did a comparison and and you saw that this was new, so it, it, it sort of made its way into the CMDB. Uh, would you be able to, to sort of look to see if there had been a change request made? And Because if there hadn't been a change request made, you know, what's going on? Why would there have been a, a new laptop assigned? You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, you would obviously, when you, when you did your metric support of that last discovery run, if I found five new assets, you then could do a see if there are change requests where an asset like that has been identified. And if not, you're right, you really are inviolating in your policies and processes. Now, uh, when I do the discovery, if, if, I, if I have, when I would do the change request to install the asset, you know, I would have made sure at that point in time that I went on, on and put the asset into the CMDB and it would be marked and tied to that asset. So when I do the discovery and that's not there, I would know that. So you should never have an occasion, or rarely should you have an occasion, where I discover something that's new to the network and there's not a change request, unless, unless that's your policy. If you don't enforce that, then obviously we'd never set a flag to, uh, to check for that. Right, because it could be a security violation, right? If, if some, it, so, it's suddenly it's you get this, yeah, yeah, you've got a new laptop out there, you know, what's going on? So I, I like how that uh, is set up. Um, another question that I had has, has to do with uh, dependency mapping. I, you know, you showed, um, I think there were some servers or maybe they were laptops and they were all connected through a particular uh, server, I believe. Uh, it was through a router. Right. Or through a router, okay. Right. How, how is that, is, is, is that kind of a manual process? I mean, because how would, how would you know what, in terms of the dependency mapping, where everything goes? 
Well, I, I could certainly go directly into the CMDB, if you remember when I went in there and it had all those attributes and all. I could create a relationship there and it would show it, but that becomes unsustainable over time to try to do that manually. So that's where having a tool like Footprints Asset Core, it will discover the network devices and the uh, servers and PCs and so forth, and it can see what it's connected to. So that's where that relationship ultimately gets uh, gets created. Now, it's only doing it from the endpoint to the to the network device that it's doing. It's not doing the more sophisticated tying it to business service discoveries and all of that that some of our other tools like Atrium, Atrium Discovery and Dependency Mapping does. But the example that you referenced, Dick, where I brought up a, a router and I said, show me all of the devices that are coming through this router, that was done because we used Footprint Asset Core to actually create that population. But as I said, I could have manually gone in there and said, okay, here's this new T410 laptop, and I'm going to manually say this now has a relationship to that router, and then it would show up in that graphic going forward. Okay. Yeah, uh, but again, you know, I, I think that's think unsustainable that, yeah. over over time to try to manually right. keep track of that much information. Right, but I, I certainly think that you know if you're going to go to your boss and say, "Hey, we just got this new software program," and then you're going to say, "Well, what's what's it doing for us?" You could say, "Well, our, in terms of asset management effectiveness, it's much better," and, and here's why. For example, we were working with a, a customer, and they were surprised they they received this big bill from Microsoft at the end of the year when they did their true up, and they had no idea that it was it was around SharePoint licensing that it was going to be that much money. And so you right. have to be a little bit careful. You want to get be a little proactive. You don't want to be surprised that uh, if a, a big bill is going to come due. Right, and so. and that's really one of the great strengths of the Footprint Asset Core uh, project. It's got a product catalog in there, and the compliance module uh, tracks the software licenses that you've purchased against what is discovered uh, by vendor, and does a does a normalization of the naming conventions. So that type of tool can definitely help you avoid a, a surprise like this, uh, you know, being out of compliance with one of the major vendors uh, like, like Microsoft out there. Okay. Uh, there's another question here about uh, implementation uh, time frame. Could you describe what would be a, a typical uh, foot, Footprints uh, Service Core implementation? How long would it take to, uh, to get this up and running? Sure, and the, the, uh, the, the normal disclaimer of, you know, on average, right, is what we're talking about here. But normally to bring up a workspace like Incident Manager, so to get you trained and have a core product get set up, you know, the users, the accounts, the so forth, and then set up an Incident Management workspace with, you know, notifications and escalations and that type of thing, that's normally about, uh, let's just say, a two-week process. Sometimes it's a little bit quicker, sometimes a little bit longer. But by the time you do it, you know, nine to ten days. To set up your CMDB and your, uh, your starting to do your service catalogs, you can kind of figure on about a week. Now, the first one took two weeks because you got, you got a week of just basic training of understanding how to set footprints up and create the users and all of those. And then each one of your modules, as I say, in that time frame of a couple of days of planning, probably three days of implementation if it's using the approach of, We'll sit down with you, help you plan it out, and then you can kind of build it. We'll teach you to fish. So that's the kind of basically 40 hours per workspace. Uh, other users will say, well, I don't have time to even build it. I want to get a little training on it, but you guys go on and build out my five service catalogs. Then, you know, then instead of it being a five-day effort, it's more like about a, a, an eight- to nine-day effort per, uh, per type. And, again, that's on average. Footprints Asset Core. Uh, Again, that's going to be by module, but for each one of the things, like patch management, uh, OS deployment, application monitoring, uh, inventory discovery and remote control, the core training to use that module is about three days, and then it's roughly a couple of days per function. So inventory discovery would be a couple of days to show you how to do that. Patch management would be a couple of days to get you up and running and show you how to do that. Okay. And, you know, we'd, we'd be more than happy to sit down with anybody and, and, you know, have a little bit of a discovery call to exactly what your volumes are and what type of uh, workspaces you'd need set up and give you a, certainly a much more accurate uh, definition of uh, what it would take to get you running in your environment. 